Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm David. And this is everything you need to know about suspension trauma and fall protection. Number one, what is suspension trauma? Suspension trauma is also known as orthostatic intolerance or harness hang syndrome. And it is a hazard associated with working at heights and something that happens to a worker once they've fallen but before they're rescued. According to OSHA, orthostatic intolerance may be defined as a development of symptoms such as lightheadedness, palpitations, tremulousness, poor concentration, fatigue, nausea, dizziness, headache, sweating, weakness, and occasionally fainting upright during standing. While in a sedentary position, blood can accumulate in the veins, which is commonly called venous pooling, and cause orthostatic intolerance. Orthostatic intolerance also can occur when an individual moves suddenly after being sedentary for a long time. For example, a person may experience orthostatic intolerance when they stand up quickly after sitting still for a long time. Number two, who does this happen to? For our conversation, this is gonna to happen to a worker at heights who has fallen while using a personal fall arrest system. So they are hanging in the air with a body harness attached, anchor point, connector, all of that. And they are now in a sedentary position, unable to move. They could be conscious, they could be unconscious. Number three, how bad can it be? So we don't really know exactly how bad it could be. There are a lot of different factors taken into account here. So depending on the free fall distance, the weight of the worker, um, your personal health conditions. So you really don't know how bad it can be. It could lead all the way to death. Uh, it could be very minor. There are some sources online and, and if you take certain trainings that say if you hang for so long, maybe a certain period of time, that is certainly that you're going to die. There's also a few other things out there that give careful instructions on what to do with a worker who has fallen there. A lot of that is made up, unfortunately. So we have some sources with the NLM who give the exact definitions of everything. We're going to reference that in the blog article that's attached to this video, and you can read all about it there. And this comes from the National Library of Medicine, and they state, although suspension trauma is potentially life-threatening, there is a lack of scientific data to define an exact mechanism of injury, and there is little conclusive evidence about the proper management of victims. This has led to controversy surrounding the topic of post-suspension management. The discussion of suspension trauma has historically been led by non-medical experts, but the recent push for more evidence-based research has created an understanding of the condition. So the answer of how bad can it be Certainly, we believe it could, it could lead to death. When you go and try to find examples of deaths from suspension trauma, you're not gonna find a lot. You're gonna find some other contributing factors. The best thing is to have a really good rescue plan. We'll get into that with number four. How do I minimize the effects? The first thing you wanna have is your OSHA required rescue plan. So under 1926-502, OSHA states that the employer shall have a prompt rescue of employees in event of a fall. So what does that mean? You're gonna have in your rescue plan, how your worker, if a, if a worker does fall, how you're gonna rescue them, and the timeline you're gonna rescue them in. Yeah, and so the plan leaves a lot to the employer, but you need training for each worker, for each anchor point, and each fall hazard. You need to know what everybody's gonna do in the case of an emergency. How are you going to announce the emergency? What are the methods that you're gonna be using to rescue that worker and any tooling that must be available at that time? Everyone involved needs training on this and needs documentation for it. A good idea is to have trauma release straps attach to all your full body harnesses on site. What this is gonna do is allow your workers, if they do occur in a fall and they're conscious, they can attach a trauma release strap, stand up and relieve some of that pressure off their legs. If a worker is able to, this allows blood to flow more naturally throughout the body while in a suspended state. Trauma relief straps are low cost, high value items and they should be accompanied with every safety harness that you purchase. Although there's not a lot of hard data out there medically about suspension trauma, there is a high need to rescue somebody quickly and a lot of products and processes that are readily available for someone to use in this case. You can check out our fall plan, rescue plan, and trauma release traps at multidynamics.com.